Thank you, Emily. And uh, very good evening and good morning and good afternoon to everyone who are in the world. Okay, so uh, my name is Vinod Krishnaswamy and uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, share my knowledge with you guys in this uh, session. And uh, uh, with me is uh, Adamo Tonato and we are both a uh, support engineer working as a MongoDB MySQL engineer in, in Perkona. Sorry. Okay, so myself. So I started as a MySQL DBA and uh, uh, at uh, 2006 and then started working on MongoDB. And right now I'm uh, supporting both uh, MySQL DB and uh, both MongoDB as well. And uh, I'm a trainer and I have conducted many kind of uh, uh, training sessions in MySQL and MongoDB. And uh, other than that, I do scripting, reading, driving. And that's it. And now here I am as a Peconian. And uh, this is Adamo. Please go ahead. Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. So my name is Adamo. Uh, I work here in support engineering at Pecona for a while. And you probably hear, uh, you probably attend some webinar from me. Um, this is a, a very different webinar because this webinar will be based on the last Percona Live presentation uh, when uh, I spoke about the shard internals. And uh, it seems this subject is very interesting for who's starting or who wants to know a little bit more about the sharding, right? So I'll be here with my colleague um, Vino, right? And um, yeah, uh, go ahead, Vino, if you have questions. I'm gonna be here for the questions later, right? And uh, go ahead, Vino. Yeah, thank you, Adam. So yeah, so as uh, uh, Adam was telling, like uh, this is a part of a uh, uh, Percona Live uh, PPT, and uh, even you can see these things in the Percona Live. And let us see, like, what is the agenda today? What we are going to discuss in this session? And this session, we are going to see what is about uh, the Sharda cluster. Anyway, well, regarding this session, so we, you know, the prerequisite is like you, you need to know what is Sharda cluster and replica set as well. And but still, we will go into the overview of Sharda cluster here and what we are going to see actually. And after that, it's a config server internal. So this is the main topic of our talk today. And uh, these are some of the collections which exist inside the config database, okay? The action log, change log, chunks. So th these are the collections. And we are going to see in detail about these collections and what they hold and why are there and what purpose is uh, uh, those collections are serving. So uh, by understanding these things, the uh, probably after this session, you you might understand uh, how the sharded cluster is working internally and why the collections these collections are very important for sharded cluster to uh, run very smoothly. Okay, and uh, some more collections are there, and these are some of them. And apart from that, uh, there are some collections are also uh, uh, does exist in config database. So uh, as you, many of you might know that after 3.6, they have introduced MongoDB have introduced a lot of features like sessions, retrieval rights, change stream and everything, right? So from 4.0, they have introduced the transactions as, as well multi-document transactions. So to support these things, there are some other collections as well inside the config database. Again, uh, uh, even though they are inside the config database, they are not related actually, not directly related with the sharded cluster. But again, we will see what are those collections and uh, let me try to explain them as much as possible, but that is not the main topic of this uh, talk actually. And let uh, I will tell you what is do's and do's in the Sharda cluster. That means like uh, uh, even though you you will understand what these collections are about, these are meant to be maintained by Sharda cluster itself, not for any manual edit. Okay. So when you are uh, if you want to edit or unknowingly if you want if you are going to edit this, please. Uh, uh, note that uh, you are going to change all the metadata of the Sharda cluster. It may go into work or it may not go into work, okay? And that's it 
that's it and yeah let's go deep into the uh, session and before that we will see what is the shardet cluster here so as you all know that this is the overview of the shardet cluster architecture and there are three main components in the shardet cluster one is mongoes and another is config server and another is the shardet shards okay and uh, as you know the mongo is, is the router actually it gets all it gets all the requests from the applications and it routes those application requests to the data and it fetches the data from shards and then it uh, uh, gives back the uh, requested data to the applications and uh, while doing this uh, you might ask what is the purpose of config so config server is the one which keeps the metadata of everything even though the router goes directly into the shard and gets the data it router needs to know where your data exists that means uh, whether it is in shard one or shard two or any other shards in the shard cluster okay so to know all these things those metadata are saved in config server so you are going to save all, everything in the config server metadata and the actual data from application are going to be saved in the shards and this is what uh, app mongo s and shards so you're going to give request to, from app to the mongo s and mongo is going to get the data from the shards okay and uh, uh, there is a concept called primary shard okay so even though you have uh, you are going to create many application databases and going to shard the uh, database to split split your data across the shards sometimes you might choose to not shard your database that means you can choose to reset your whole database inside a shard itself so that means when you are not going to shard a particular database okay and that particular database is going to reside in a particular shard itself and the whatever if you are going to write 100 gb or 1 terabyte into the uncharted uh, database it going to uh, reside in the same shard server itself okay and for example if you are going to create a, a database called uh, percona and if you are not going to shard that and it it uh, it resets in shard one okay and whatever inserts going or updates whatever happening into that percona database happens in the shard one okay so that's what we call it as a primary shard okay and when you are sharding a particular database you can you are actually going to split your data uh, depends on your shard key okay so you know that right so depends on the shard key your data will get distributed among the shards okay so even though when the uh, data get distributed across the shards uh, the main the first point of uh, contact from a mongo is to that particular database is the primary shard okay so this is the uh, this is about primary shard and uh, 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 Config server going to hold all the database details and uh, uh, data distribution. So this is how like uh, your data and it gets shards. And once you shard the database and once you enable sharding for your collection level, even though you enable shard for your database, you have to again enable sharding for your collection and provide your shard key on which based on the uh, data is to get distributed okay so once you enable sharding for your collection those data will get <coughs> sorry sorry okay so once you uh, shard your collection those data gets uh, into chunks okay so uh, the default value of chunk size is 64 mb so once your uh, chunks gets fills up to 64 mb your data or your chunk is going to get distributed okay and uh, for example your chunk is now 64 mb and it gets split into two and again it grows okay so on the balancer which balance balances the chunks across the shards okay for example uh, here uh, you have three shards let us uh, take an example like shard three shard one shard two and shard three okay and you are having a collection here and uh, you you want to keep a thousand to two thousand uh, data range in shard one and thousand one to two thousand in shard two and 
three uh, 2001 to 3000 in chart three okay so when you mention those uh, uh, short key and uh, uh, split your chunks across uh, depends on that the balancer will take care of moving those chunks from the primary shard to the other shards okay and the next uh, concept is zones actually this is uh, uh, something very special in uh, uh, sharded cluster and this is one of the uh, reason the people who wants to have sharded cluster in their application so by using zones you can actually uh, keep your data uh, on different uh, locations that means in different data centers or different servers based on your the sh shard value or the zone value and we call initially uh, when mongodb introduced this concept they called it as tag and they change the name as zones okay and uh, when you are mentioning the tags to your collections and uh, uh, for example you have uh, three tags like europe us and asia and you want to keep your data uh, 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 related with europe in europe data center and uh, related data related with us in us data center and data related with asia and asia data center so once uh, uh, you create tags based on these values and you are going to uh, map your uh, shard key according to this tags so once your shard key matches this tag value the europe data will go to europe data center and use data will go to use data center so in that way you can uh, access the data very easily you don't need to actually travel into other continent to get the data okay so locally in your data center in your region you can get the data okay so this is the main advantage of zones and uh, uh, there are many blogs in percona blog as well you can go and check that and other thing is who holds the metadata so as I said to you earlier, config server holds the metadata, okay? So you have to make sure that no manual edit goes into the config server and the backup, you're going to backup this config server in, in a regular uh, interval, okay? So this is very important. And uh, uh, let us go uh, into the topic uh, config database and uh, this is how your database looks like so i'm connected right now i'm connected into the mongo server and use config i'm going into the database and show collections and these are the collections inside the database and for example here i have used percona mongodb 3.6 and if you are running 3.6 percona server mongodb you can see all these collections inside your database config database okay and the other thing is like uh, uh, about your uh, mongo is so as i said to you how mongo is actually reads the data metadata from config server actually when you are starting your mongo is if you correctly remember you will give the config server as uh, arguments to the mongo is mongoes command right so even in the config uh, file or if you are running if you are uh, starting mongoes directly you are going to give the config servers as a parameter okay so when you are giving that uh, as a parameter mongoes will first connect to the uh, config servers and cache the data from config server okay so that's how the mongo is going to know all the mongo uh, metadata inside it okay so it used that cache to route the reads and writes to the respective shard okay so uh, and it also helps you to put a targeted operation as well as the broadcast uh, broadcast operation that means when you are actually targeting your operation that means when you are using the shard key okay so for example uh, i told you right i'm going to split my uh, uh, inside the percona database i'm having a collection and splitting my 1 2000 record in shard 1 2001 to 3000 into shard 2 okay so something like that so when i'm uh, mentioning those things when mongo is gets a query related with a, uh, id equal to 2002 it goes directly into the shard 2 instead of going and searching where your 2002 resides okay so that is called targeted operations so when you are using shard key inside your queries 
and your commands so you can actually uh, take the advantage of these targeted operations but if you are not going to use your shard key or if it is going to use other keys or composite keys it going to broadcast your operations mongo is will send the request to all shards and gets the data and uh, 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 put it into one shard and uh, process the data and give it to the application so well, when you are writing your application you have to make sure you are uh, you are using shard key mostly into your applications okay and uh, when you are updating uh, manually okay the chunk splits or shard changes if you are doing it automatically those changes will uh, go into config server and those will get uh, 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 get replicated to the mongoes directly okay and you don't need to do anything but if you are going to do any manual edit like uh, moving primary from one shard to another shard or clearing the jumbo chunks the uh, Okay, so in those cases, you have to manually refresh the data. How you can do is restart to refresh the metadata that restart your Mongo S. Okay, or else you can actually, there are commands to refresh online. Okay, so we will see what those commands are. Okay, so these are the commands. So if you want to refresh collection level, you can mention collection here, db.collection and flush router config command. Or else, if you want to flush with database level, you can use this. Or else, if you want to uh, flush for instance level, you can use the third command, that db.admin command, flush router config, colon one. Okay, so this is how you can uh, 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 you can force the uh, refresh of cache in the MongoS server. So this particular command you can run only in the MongoS. Okay. So let's go into the main topic config database. And uh, here I have taken a test sharded cluster and uh, 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 to show you what's inside the collection, I have taken a, uh, uh, I have uh, created a test environment and I have uh, uh, taken screenshots from those collections and chunks. And uh, for my test, I have taken two Mongoes, which are running in 27017 port and 27018 port. And I'm mentioning those as application because application going to connect the Mongoes. And mostly we are going to keep Mongoes in the application servers. So that's why I kept inside separate box. And config server, I'm going to run only one server uh, with a replica set enable. Because from 3.4 version of MongoDB, uh, enabling replica set for config server is must okay it's mandatory so you have to create replica set and here i have enabled replica set and single primary server here and i'm having three shards and all are running in a replica set and i have given the port number 27019 for shard one and other three ports for shard two okay and other three ports for shard three okay and this is uh, uh, how it looks like. And I have taken 3.6.11 iPhone uh, 3.1 Fecona server MongoDB server for uh, this test. And right now I have three databases, uh, admin and config and Vinod. So Vinod is manually created by me. And if uh, you go into Vinod, you can see two uh, collections, test data and test data too. And here I have test data. Uh, both collections are uh, enabled with sharding. So you can see all the uh, chunks uh, splitted across the shards. And this I have uh, created with a, a range uh, key. And for this test data too, I have created with the hash it key, okay? That I will show you why it is uh, uh, important like range key or hash it key important, okay? So the first uh, collection of the uh, config database is action log. Okay, so uh, if you go into the action log, okay, so you can see this. Uh, I have listed only uh, uh, some of doc documents, and here you can see one document, action log find and pretty, pretty to show you every fields and values in a separate line. And here you can see this is the server, 
server name and uh, uh, what it is doing okay so this will tell you what is actually happening inside uh, for that document so balancer round in the sense like so for balancer actually it uh, uh, it maintains it, uh, it checks periodically to uh, checks whether there are any chunks to move okay so uh, uh, it, it is doing that kind of uh, uh, routine check and ns is the namespace uh, here nothing is there so no uh, action has been taken and error required or how much time it took for to do this activity and uh, how many chunks were there and chunks moved how many chunks were moved one okay so this is how you can see this and uh, uh, so this again uh, this action log is not seen in 4.0 uh, versions okay it's only seen in the 3.6 or earlier and the, uh, again uh, there is no much detail about action log in the document of mongodb as well and uh, 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 after this collection action log is the change log okay so if you see this change log this is going to tell whatever happens to your sharded cluster okay so when you're going to do any troubleshooting or if you want to know what is happen what has happened or what is going on in your sharded cluster you have to see this collection okay so all metadata data changes all all metadata change in operations will go into this particular uh, change log collections and it is very useful in troubleshooting so if you are going to troubleshoot uh, and you might want to check this collection first and uh, for example i have taken a, uh, a, a one document to show you here and again the server is uh, this particular server name and for this uh, test cluster and i have taken a one server for doing creating all instances so you're going going to see only one server name for all documents okay so uh, in production it is not going to happen so you're going to have multiple servers so you can see different server names here and other thing is uh, uh, 127001 that is like localhost okay and uh, it's going to tell uh, when it happened and what happened the split happened so what happened like when i was actually uh, 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 created this database okay so this collection and sharded this i have uh, manually split this collection so i was telling you right uh, i wanted to keep my one two thousand in one shard and one thousand two or two thousand in another shard something like that so i was doing that split up manually so there is a command called sh dot split up uh, uh, at split at or split find okay so you can check this in uh, documents uh, in, in uh, documentations for more details so by using these comments you can manually actually uh, instead of automatic split of chunks you can manually create chunks as well okay so uh, i have done that uh, split operation manually that's what you are seeing here split operation and i have done this for test data to collection so you are seeing here and uh, you can see that uh, you can see this id value as number long i was telling you right i have created hashed index so that's why you are seeing this value instead of one two or something in the id value okay so i have created the hashed index so uh, whatever go, your uh, the chunks going to deal is with the hash value of the original value so it's not going to use the original value id equal to one instead it's going to use the hash value of id equal to one okay in that way this uh, particular chunk uh, going to deal with this particular collection and you can see minimum id value and maximum id value of this particular chunk and uh, you can see after that uh, where it moved okay and left right in the sense like uh, 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 you can uh, this is the uh, chunk before this and after the chunk after this particular chunk okay for example uh, let us consider as a train container on uh, the coach s1 is uh, your chunk okay the coach s2 is uh, the other chunk in the right and coach s0 is the chunk in the left hand side okay so some more example is like here i'm going to do that this move chunk i have done the uh, i was moving this and I, I actually uh after i split the chunks uh, okay so the balancer was moving this particular chunk and you are you are seeing that the same operation and even if you notice if some of might have noticed in the mongodb log as well 
uh, that mo chunk will go into six steps okay so it's not going to do that in one step itself okay because <coughs> Sorry, uh, it has to do from pre-checks before doing the uh, movement from one shot to another okay. and after checking that it it will start the checking process after it will do the it will start the movement process and it start moves and after moving that uh, uh, actually it's not move actually it's the copy of chunk okay because why it is so means if something happened in between the copy you will have some uh, the original copy inside the original shard for example sh uh, chunk a is moved from shard 1 to shard 2 okay so uh, the shard uh, 1 is going to copy chunk a to shard 2 if something happens in between the operation you will have the original copy in shard 1 okay so after copying wholly and it verifies that uh, every uh, every document of the chunk is moved to the shard 2 it will delete the original copy in shard 1 okay for doing this it needs it needs to go uh, six steps okay so that's what you are seeing here you can see from which shard shard 2 to shard 3 it has gone so you can see this and note you can see whether it is success or failure so in this way you can understand that uh, uh, how your uh, chunks has been moved and what has happened in your, in your uh, 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 shadow cluster. For example, if you see some uh, problem at, uh, at the particular time, for example, 12 uh, p.m., you are facing some issues. You can check this particular collection uh, uh, for that particular duration. You can check from 11.55 a.m. to uh, 12 15 pm so you can understand that what went inside the shadow cluster uh, uh, in the metadata level uh, uh, from this collection okay so you can understand if some move chunk is happening and you have some operations which is related with that chunk so it might get locked okay because for example when you are moving you cannot do the uh, operations on that particular chunk you cannot do any changes so in that way you can understand okay so because of this you can uh, uh, you, you, you can uh, stop the balancer process as well because some of our clients actually enable balancer window that means you're not going to do balancing move chunks all the time okay you can uh, you can have an option to enable that balancer for a particular time so we call it as a balancer window okay for example if you want to run your balancer only from 11 pm in the night up to 5 am in the morning you can uh, set that inside uh, this config server i will show you that command as well and if you set that balancer window your balancer will move the chunks from one shot to other shots only at that particular time only okay so that you can make sure that your application is not loaded because of move chunk operations so uh, this is how you can understand these things and uh, the next collection here is chunks so this chunks will show you like how many chunks are there in your shadow cluster actually okay so for example uh, uh, you have uh, uh, for small uh, shadow cluster it's fine you can count by yourself but what about like for bigger applications for a lot of uh, data for one terabyte to a terabyte and you have uh, your chunks in lakhs of uh, millions okay so in those times you uh, you you can make use of this chunks collection to identify where your chunks and then where it resides in which uh, shard it resides okay so it uh, it has information about each chunk in the shadow cluster so you don't need to worry if you are going to have uh, a billion chunks you, you will have billion records here if you are going to have only 10 chunks you will have 10 records in this chunk collection so you will uh, by looking into this chunks collection you will know where your chunks live or in which shard it is in okay so it will show you real data distribution so again uh, there is a command called uh, sh dot uh, 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 get shard uh, 
data uh, distribution so something like that so i don't remember the correct uh, thing i think a db dot collection name dot get a uh, shard distribution so uh, if you see that it will show you like where your chunks are for that particular collection and uh, it will show you the percentage of data distribution across the uh, 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 across the chunks uh, across the shards okay so uh, you can see by through that uh, uh, command for particular collection or else wholly into this uh, particular uh, chunks collection okay for example uh, here uh, yeah, I'm showing just only one uh, document here. Find one will show you only one document here. You can see ID and the NS is config.system.session. So actually system.sessions is not a uh, manually created uh, collection. It is uh, created automatically by uh, MongoDB. And this is actually used for uh, 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 sessions or uh, retrievable rights of, uh, and this is uh, you can see this particular collection only after 3.6 okay that means from 3.6 you can see this collection because from 3.6 many of you know that uh, they have introduced sessions of future retrievable rights and chain stream and everything right so for those purpose uh, this particular system dot sessions is there and it is automatically sharded if you are using this in sharded cluster but if you are using only replica set and you will see it as a, a, a normal database and collection inside the config database okay so this is one here and uh, uh, you can see this uh, minimum and maximum id here so it resides uh, only one chunk so it has only one chunk because you have minimum key as one and minimum maximum key as one so that means you have only one chunk so all your data is inside one chunk okay so uh, in shard one itself okay and this is uh, maintained by config server itself so you don't need to do anything for this particular collection and these are the uh, some of the other collections you can see winner.disk data winner.disk data 2 so you can see this uh, uh, here you can see for winner.disk data you can see the value id equal to 3001 uh, and id equal to 7001 something like this right and but for test data 2 you don't see that because it is hashed index so you are going to see only the hash value and the next uh, collection inside the uh, <coughs> config database is collections and uh, okay so here again i want to uh, show you something like uh, it's uh, for example here you can see chunks.find.count that means uh, you have only eight uh, documents inside the chunks collections okay so uh, you can count your uh, number of chunks from the shard status if you want to see the shard status you have to do sh.status okay so this you can count here for shard one you have for test data two collection you have one uh, uh, chunk in shard one and one chunk in shard two and two chunks in shard three okay so totally four chunks in for your test data two collections and three chunks for your test data collection and one chunk for system sessions so totally one two three four five six eight so eight chunks are there in the chunks collections so okay for this test environment, you can cross verify these things. And uh, uh, so this is the next is the database collections. I think I have uh, 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 there is another collections called collections. Actually, inside that uh, collections, you can see all the collections of the database. I think I missed that uh, screenshot here. Oh, sorry about that. And uh, if I have time, uh, I can show you that collection what's inside that. But uh, there is nothing special inside that one. Okay, so you are going to see only we know database and uh, uh, test data collection, test data two collections. Okay. So and we have another uh, uh, collection called databases. And inside this, uh, you can see this particular one, db.databases.find, and you can see this Vinod. You might wonder that uh, there is no local database or admin database or config database because they are all created automatically by MongoDB, not uh, by us. 
manually okay so in databases collection uh, uh, in collection you are going to see only manually created or application created databases not uh, create uh, that uh, system table uh, or system related uh, databases uh, you are not going to see here okay so uh, you are going to see here this is the primary shard for that particular database is shard 2 so whatever you are going to write first it goes to the shard 2 and uh, then it gets distributed to other shards okay and uh, it is partition yes true i have enabled partition for that you can check here okay so you uh, it is partition true and you can see the chunks are there okay and uh, uh, i will show you the uh, other example like uh, uh, you might wonder like whether uh, this particular data uh, if i'm having a database but that is not sharded uh, whether uh, you can see that of database as well inside this collection yes you can see so here i'm going to create a database called adamo and going to create a collection inside that and uh, if you see here use config and i'm going to see here you can see adamo here now previous slide you don't see adamo but here you can see adamo here because we have created here sorry about that i have cold uh, sorry so here you can see the primary shard for this particular database adamo is shard 3 and it is not partition actually uh, we have not enabled sharding for this particular database that's what uh, that's why you are seeing partition as false here okay so uh, uh, apart from that uh, the next collection inside our config database is lock pings okay so uh, the lock pings is actually it's a very interesting uh, collection because uh, <coughs> For example, uh, 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 you, you might want to understand, uh, like, uh, uh, so let me tell you, like, what this collection is about. Uh, it actually uh, uh, holds all the data or holds all the pings from the members of all clusters. Okay, all members in the clusters. For example, we have for our test cluster, we have uh, two MongoS and one config server and nine uh, members for our shards and three each uh, uh, three members for each replica set for each shards and three shards totally nine so totally we have uh, nine plus two plus one that is 12 okay so 12 members are there in our test cluster so these 12 uh, members will ping each other and make sure that uh, they are seeing each other okay so that's how they are uh, they maintains the consistency between them stability between them if it is not going to see something for example if the config server goes away from the network okay so then the sharded cluster will understand that uh, that config server is not reachable now so it is uh, it is going to actually uh, stop the balancer activity and uh, uh, it will just uh, uh, the mongo is will just show you the record whatever it's inside its cache and uh, it's not going to run any balancer or whatever because balancer will fail because it cannot access the config database and for example if the uh, one shard is out of network okay and particularly totally uh, even though if you are running the replica set whole of your members in the particular shard is out of network okay still your uh, shard can, can work and if you are, have a particular request and it can serve provided uh, the uh, monga s can do target uh, operations okay for example uh, you are doing one operation based on the shard key and you want to uh, see the value of id equal to 2002 okay and uh, your shard uh, one is not online now okay so but mongo is just know that it resides in shard 3 so mongo is will go shard 3 directly and get the fetch the data and give it to the application but now you are going to search based on the other key or not based on your shard key then now mongo s has to broadcast your request and now it sees mongo s uh, sorry shard one is not reachable in that case uh, it will hold that uh, request and it, it will not reply for that request okay or it will give you error okay so uh, you can understand in this way that some of your shards or some of your uh, system is not reachable 
for example even though uh, 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 for example now shard 3 is not reachable but your primary shard for your uh, test data is uh, 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 for a vino database is shard 2 okay so if whatever inserts you are doing you can insert into the vino uh, database into the uh, shard 2 uh, uh, collection that particular shard okay because only shard 3 is not that that is not the primary shard for this vino database so this is how you can understand the problem and uh, uh, make use of these collections okay for this particular collection lock pings you can see here that a lot of pings happen and those are logged inside this particular collection okay so you can see this port number vinod krishna swami vinod test standalone one is the uh, uh, host name and see here you are seeing same name because i am running in the same uh, server and you can see different port numbers that's how you can uh, differentiate uh, members here for this particular test cluster 27017 is mongo s and it has uh, uh, registered the ping on this particular time and 18 the another mongo s has registered its ping in this time okay and here you can see the config server has also registered in this particular time so how you can you, you usually use this log pings collections for example uh, you want to know for that uh, for a particular time uh, your particular uh, member is out of network so you want to test whether your cluster has a uh, view on that particular member on that particular duration so you can see the here and check whether the ping is registered or not okay so for example uh, uh, if it is uh, for example between uh, 940 to 945 i'm searching uh, in this particular collection and if i'm not seeing any uh, entry for 270 or 21 or 22 okay so here i can see those things for for example if i'm searching for a particular member and if it is not there here you can understand that the cluster uh, was not able to reach that particular member and you can see those messages related with that unreachability in the mongodb log as well okay so by understanding this collection you can check these things and uh, troubleshoot things okay and uh, the other thing uh, uh, the other collection here is uh, the logs okay and here it is very uh, uh, you know that uh, whenever there is a balancer running it tries to check the chunks and uh, if it needs it will actually move the chunks to other shards right so whenever the uh, uh, the cluster moves the th chunk it takes the locks and then it do it does the chunk movement okay so whenever it takes the uh, distributed lock in the cluster okay so it will put an entry inside this particular collection so it uses to store the distributed locks inside this collection but again uh, in old version what happens like the balancer was initialized by one of the mongo s servers and uh, if you see inside the logs database uh, sorry logs collection you can see the mongo s details okay and you will understand like okay so by this time it was moving this particular chunk and it has taken logs for this particular time okay so you can understand that uh, this particular time uh, the chunk movement was there or the particular time the distributed lock were there in that shadai cluster and uh, the concept of running the balancer from mongo s got changed in 3.4 and uh, uh, thus it started uh, the config server took the responsibility of running the balancer from uh, it okay so the uh, whatever the balancer uh, was running from 3.4 the uh, config server was responsible and is responsible okay so while it is running uh, it created a uh, it puts an entry uh, with a underscore id and value as balancer inside the logs data uh, logs collection okay so uh, till 3.4 if you see inside the logs collection and if you could uh, uh, track the particular id underscore id equal to balancer you can understand that particular uh, uh, config server has taken distributed log, log right now inside the cluster okay so you might uh, see inside the for example uh, for pmm or some other monitoring tool you can see they uh, they search for this particular value and uh, let you know that whether distributed log exists in the shadow cluster or not okay 
and again other thing uh, other point i wanted to tell you here, here is till 3.4 uh, you are allowed to do only single chunk movement at a time there is no possible to run multiple chunk uh, at a time okay so uh, till 3.4 that is till 3.2 uh, you can run only one chunk movement okay so if the system is doing one chunk movement the other chunk has to wait till this operation completes so the burden of this is uh, uh, if you have a very huge data set okay so uh, you have lot of chunks okay so you don't have chance to run multiple chunks in parallel okay you have to wait for one chunk to finish its movement okay and here from 3.4 they have uh, relaxed this uh, restriction and allowed that n by 2 round of simultaneous simultaneous chunk migration for example uh, if you are running four shards okay so you can do up to two chunks of uh, migration uh, uh, for uh, for different uh, uh, <coughs> chunks okay for in different sh shards as well for example if the chunk movement is happening from shard 1 to shard 2 and you cannot do the other parallel operation in shard 1 or either in uh, uh, shard 2 okay you cannot do uh, uh, chunk migration on those two uh, shards the, the other uh, you are allowed to do other chunk migration in shard 3 and shard 4 okay so that's how you you can manage your parallel chunk migrations and automatically actually uh, usually it happens automatically but also there is a command to move chunk the ssh dot move chunk manually you can move the chunks sometimes what happens in uh, i know some of my customers as well uh, they do the chunk migrations manually as well they do split the ch their chunks at particular range and they move chunks uh, uh, manually okay so the right uh, uh, script or some um, while loop or uh, for loops kind of thing and they uh, write uh, they try to move those chunks and based on the uh, shard key values okay so so in that way you don't need to actually uh, rely on uh, automatic mechanism of sharded cluster okay uh, for example you can stop the balancer that means that you can stop the uh, automatically uh, uh, sharded cluster to balancing things you can stop that uh, mechanism and you can do manual chunk migrations okay so these are the some of the hacks that you can do to uh, fasten up the things and a lot of application guys i think most of you might have done this already and starting from 3.6 the balance are no long takers uh, lock distributed locks for balance uh, for chunk migration okay so uh, you might not see this underscore id in balance uh, equal to balancer from 3.6 okay so uh, again uh, if you are doing migration from uh, uh, upgradation from 3.4 to 3.6 you might see this value or if you are directly running uh, uh, started with 3.6 you might not see this underscore id balancer inside 3.6 versions from 3.6 versions okay and this is uh, some example here and you can see this uh, the underscore id is on Adamo and this is not uh, uh, on balancer and the process the config server has taken this lock why it has taken because for create database in previously i haven't shown you right uh, we have created collection inside the adama database that has implicitly created the adama database as well so while it was creating that adamo database and uh, it was putting some metadata log all over the cluster and you are seeing that and you can see the date as well and other thing is like mongo s collection so this holds all the information about your mongo s if you are running hundred hundreds of your mongo s okay there are customers who runs lot of mongo s even they don't have they don't know or they don't have uh, information about their mongo s as well so in those cases you can check this particular collection and understand how many mongo s's are there in your sharded cluster okay so uh, we here we have only two mongo s's so you can see 27017 270 18. so these through are running in mongo version and you can see that mongo version as well and for example uh, let me go before you can see this line as well active mongo ss and you can see the version as well 
so for example if you are doing uh, upgradation from 3.2 or 3.3.4 to 3.6 okay so you might miss some of your mongo s to upgrade from 3.4 so you can see those things here or else inside this particular collection and uh, the next collection uh, we have another uh, 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 only 11 minutes so let me go fast here so we have other collection called shards so here again you will see only the shard information you can see that we can see the shard name here and uh, this is the host name and replica set here we have replica set name and we both names are same so that's why you're seeing here if for example if you have different replica set name you, you will see different name here okay and uh, that's how you will come to know here and most of these things are shown in the uh, ss status itself okay so if you see you can see the shard here id and host these things okay so mongo s so these collections are actually th that's the status are actually taken from these collections okay so if you change here manually for example if you go into change any host name or something you need to change here okay so if you know what you are going to do so you need to do changes in these collections okay for example like if i want to migrate from one uh, server to another server okay so there is a document in our mongodb uh, if you are migrating from one server to other server because your host name changes or ip changes so in those cases uh, there are steps to follow uh, so that mongodb will take care of those changes okay or else you can manually change here but again changing here is prohibited and if you are going to change change at at your risk and make sure you are taking backup before that and other thing is tags okay so you're going to see here collection name as tags but the, actually it is used for zones i told you right earlier when this particular concept was introduced uh, it was called as tags then they change as zones so here i have created in different test environment and you can see that europe tag asia tag and us tag so i have mentioned this uh, shard one uh, i kept shard one in uh, us tag and europe in shard 2 and shard 3 in asia tag so that's how you can uh, keep your shards in different data centers and also your data in different uh, shards based on your data value okay so uh, even uh, one uh, some of my customers uh, in percona actually uses this tags okay so uh, they uh, uh, they they are running some uh, even they are running uh, uh, two data centers and again uh, they uh, they have some uh, 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 some server with more configurations and they have more data into that uh, configuration more uh, highest configuration server and they keep a uh, low uh, that means less number of data inside the other low configuration server and they split those data based on this tax value okay so uh, i think uh, they have uh, split on particular value on uh, uh, area or gender i think so i don't remember that actually but again uh, so they are using tags and uh, by using tag not only or geographically uh, if you want to split your data uh, based on your server configuration as well you can do okay and those information are inside here inside this tags collection and other is settings collection this is the important collection that watch we are going to see here and you, here there are three things chunk size balancer and auto split i was telling you right right about chunk size because the default value is 64 mb and when you your chunk reaches the 64 mb it gets split automatically and then uh, your balancer will move those chunks across the shards okay so if you want to reduce or increase that chunk size you can do here and the balancer uh, i told you right you can mention to run the balancer on particular window so you are, you need to change this particular id underscore id balancer for mentioning the balancer window and auto split whether you want to do auto split or not so that you can uh, mention here okay it is enabled true that means default is true so it it does uh, auto split the chunks automatically okay so this is how you can do chunk size changes okay here i have 64 mb and 
through this command you can uh, change this and uh, you can download this uh, ppt and later check these commands and here i'm going to change with uh, 32 mb so the new uh, value is 32 mb here okay and the next is like uh, uh, changing the balance of window so you can see uh, before doing the any balancer window changes make sure you are stopping the balancer to make sure that there is no config uh, server metadata changes okay and uh, uh, here i'm going to update with active window here i'm mentioning 1 a.m to 6 a.m i want to enable of my balancer to work so here you are seeing and uh, the value uh, active window from 1 to 6 a.m and uh, because here you can mention with 0 0 to 23 okay so that's how you are going to mention things here and the second zero zero is uh, minutes okay first zero zero is hours and then second is minutes and this after changes please make sure that you are enabling the balancer state as well and to disable you need to unset that active window that's it so to disable or enable auto split you can use this command enable ss dot enable auto split or ss dot disable auto split and the last one is version so uh, actually when you are uh, if you try to find db dot version dot find you, you will get error because there is a, 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 a function inside that uh, mongodb available dot db dot version uh, parenthesis open and close parenthesis so if you run that it will show you the uh, version name okay so but to particularly see this particular collection you need to use this particular uh, uh, function called get collection so instead that you need to mention this version and if you see here you can see that uh, current version of sharded cluster is 6 so if you are going to change this cluster uh, metadata so you will see the further changes here so that's it about uh, uh, our topic and i told you right there are other collections as well inside the config database and uh, this is uh, again you will see only from 3.6 those collections are called system dot sessions and uh, transactions so those two collections okay so that you will see from 3.6 and again uh, those are all not actually uh, uh, not related with the sharded cluster but again those are all related for the 3.6 new future okay new feature like retrieval rights and sessions etc and uh, here you can see uh, uh, the system dot sessions collection and it is maintained by config server itself so uh, that's how you are going to see here inside the shadow cluster and the other uh, inside the sessions you can see this particular session id and everything so uh, you can see the date as well when that particular session established or not okay and other uh, collection is called transaction and it is again used for retrieval rights and from 4.0 it is used for transactions and here is an example from 4.0 and i'm creating one session and starting a transaction and inserting value and commit transaction so you can see that particular uh, uh, related value inside the transactions collection so you can see the session id same okay so you can see that okay so you can download this ppt and see this later no? And do's and do's, do's and don'ts. Be aware that whatever going to changes you are going to do here, it is going to affect your database. So please make sure uh, what you are going to do. And uh, if you are go, please make sure that you are stopping the balancer and back up your config server before doing any changes. And uh, that's it. Uh, and uh, we have come uh, to the end of the session so please let me know if you have any questions so emily so and uh, me and adamo are there for answering your questions so in hey. the meantime uh, uh sorry and i was telling you right uh, i missed you show you that what's inside that uh, uh, uh collections database so you can see that here so you can you, you're going to see so details about your collections here okay so this is about your this you can see it is hashed and it is range thing and everything okay so emily yeah please go ahead um 
thank you so much for that. Okay, um, at this time, we're now ready to take any questions that you may have. Go ahead and enter those in the questions panel down below. As a friendly reminder, a copy of today's recording will be um, sent uh, as well as the slides. If there's um, questions that you have that um, we didn't get to address today, feel free to send me an email at emily at and I'll make sure to pass on over to our presenters. Okay, so it looks like there, um, that we're actually at the top of the hour. So um, what we'll do is, um, I'll just uh, monitor my email and I'll make sure to pass on any, any questions that come through. Thank you so much everybody for presenting today and we hope to see you on future webinars.